imagination. It's way different than knowledge. Knowledge is nothing but the acquisition of information, data points, and data sets, however you receive them. Imagination is entirely spiritual. It has nothing to do with the brain, the cerebellum. Ima by virtue of imagination, we can absolutely affect the material world. We, we've been able to heal people. We've been able to change the crystalline structure of water just by thinking different thoughts. Imagination in the scientific realm has even has even spontan i'm talking about spontaneously produced optical quanta being being studied in an electron microscope where nothing could be seen and then by virtue of imagination just believing certain particles were born from other particles they would see those particles in the, in the microscope in the, in the microscope where they weren't photographed before over and over and over it is it is imagination which brings into our reality the very things we expect to see. Hello and welcome. Campbell here from Autodidactic with Lorenzo. And today we have a special guest. No, no doubt all of you know him, Jason from Archaics. And uh, most of you know Jason for his Phoenix work, but we're going to get on to um, a bit of a different topic. He has talked about it, but... but um how he uses his, his knowledge and, you know, the information he's found to create his life, basically. So welcome, Lorenzo. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for being here, mate. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys for not getting on my ass for being so tardy. <laughs> That's Every, <all> right. <laughs> everything in time. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard you talking a lot about changing state, getting out of sync, I guess, to cause change in, in what you would call a simulacrum in reality. Yeah, well, okay. All of us, we've all wanted to go to YouTube and listen to these Law of Attraction videos. And we've all seen the dynamic. We've seen that the people that promote this idea are, are basically the only ones it's working for. They're growing rich. Other people are buying into the uh, phenomenon. Other people lend them their energy by watching. I've been guilty of this. This Rhonda Byrne version of, of creating our own reality promoted in the book called The Secret that was very, very popular. It's a, a lot of people have borrowed into that. They've started their own channels. They, many people have written their own books. And it seems like only those promoting the theory actually enjoy the phenomenon. Everybody else is an observer. The dynamic mm. that's being created is that these people are using the, the energy that's being sent to them, which is attention. Attention right. is, is an energy. So uh, in, in, the, in my own life, I realized it wasn't working. Law of attraction wasn't working for me. So uh I'm a data guy. I, I I'm a I'm the type of guy who at the end of the day, I'm going to analyze what I went through that day and I'm going to see what stimuli what stimuli worked. I'm going to see what didn't. And I'm going to think about these things. And over months and years of cogitation, I'm going to see patterns because I'm a pattern recognition guy as well. And one thing I learned is that it's very simple. Just like any relationship, communication is the key. Mm. Those who are entering the the are trying to enter the dynamic of a law of attraction scenario do so thinking that they're the only participant and they're not. This requires a relation. One is broadcasting and the other one is receiving. The receiver is basically reflecting back as conditions and circumstances what is broadcast that requires a interactive dynamic this is more than law of attraction it requires a relationship and what i mean is is since i started regarding reality as a friend instead of an enemy when i quit demon chasing and looking at the darkness and realized that i'm dealing with a divine mirror that's when things started changing for me rapidly and when I mean by rapidly, I'm still sweating from that dog fight, guys. <laughs> but, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, before he, before he pressed record for this show, I just told him why I was late. Uh, I had been waiting for the broadcast, and then two of my pit bulls started fighting each other. They're still, they're still puppies, and they're still fighting for dominance. I had to break it up, and when two pit bulls are locked on each other, it's work. It's work. So we're winded right now. But to get back to the premise, it's very, very simple, Campbell. When you start regarding reality as a symbiotic relationship between you and something greater than you, then an element of trust is introduced. 
all, all, all the burden is no longer on you anymore. You are the mental architect, which means you do not build. Architects dream up ideas and designs, and therefore mm -hmm. that condition is reflected back to you. Since your ego has overridden all practicality, and you have broadcast the idea that you alone are necessary to achieve what you alone want, then it's going to be reflected back to you that whatever you do is all you're going to receive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you get you you enter a feedback loop of depression and anxiety. And these energies that you begin to broadcast now begin building for you the exact opposite of what you want. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the this is the predicament that almost everybody finds themselves in. This is what I have found, and I have shared with my with my own listeners from my development. Uh, twenty seven dollars in my pocket, living in a wooden shack. That's my first YouTube videos, and anybody can see that in the background. I was very open about basically my humble beginnings because I've had a lot of ups and downs in life. All my books combined, I couldn't make a living off of because I was only getting royalty checks every six months. So I'd be able to live off of those royalty checks for about a couple months. And then what am I going to do for the next four months to the next check? So uh, this is this is the loop I found myself in, up and down, up and down, until I got fed up. I was at the bottom, and I decided to start a YouTube channel at the same time that I was going to begin unveiling all my years and years of research, I was also going to be teaching lessons as to how we build our own reality. And I was going to do, I was going to do so by example. And that's why my videos, it's my videos are not just educational, Campbell, as you know, but they're also demonstrative at each level of the process I've been growing. And now I'm really good. I'm talking about, I'm not just supporting me, but I'm supporting several people now and a company and I, I'm doing really well and I'm, and, I, and I'm growing more and more every week and I'm going to continue because like I said earlier, I don't have any backup in me. There's no reverse here, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a, it, the whole difference to sum it all up real quick, the whole difference between the whole millions of people trying to do the law of attraction is not working for them. The, the only difference that I'm adding here is that this is a relationship and a relationship requires you to believe in and trust in something you cannot see, nor do you have any logical evidence exists. And yet you must admit to yourself that this unseen entity not only cares for you, but it wants you to basically, it wants you to be in a relationship with it. So it can experience this life with you, not just observing you. And once you take this into consideration, you will understand that it will build anything. And the perimeters are within your own psyche. The, the, the world is not a perimeter. The world is a realm. Therefore, you can build anything. You can grow to any size, uh, any dimension. And uh, you are the only restrictions that are imposed. It yeah. sounds a little bit like the Toltec, the dreamer in the dreams. But they say the life is maybe a little bit opposite of what people think in that they're being dreamed by a higher level being or they're, you know, they're double, as they call it. And it sounds like what you've uh, mentioned in, in what you figured out. If you don't mind me asking, like, let's say someone's sitting here for the first time and going, OK, you know, I've tried in my life it isn't working or sucks for this, that and the other reason. How would you suggest they begin, you know, walking from where they are to where you uh, mentioned as the potential for them? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I've had many false starts. And the first thing you're going to have to take into consideration is you're going to have false starts too. We are, we are multidimensional beings, and that means that there's going to be manifold apparatuses that work for some that do not work for others. Uh, I did a demonstration on my channel. I told everybody straight up, I said, listen, man, I don't believe in ritualism. I don't believe in witchcraft. I don't believe in all this. It's not part of my reality tunnel. I don't care about it. Even if other people have shown it to be true, it's because of basically the dynamics of belief operative within their own reality tunnels made those things come to pass. In mine, I don't really care about it, but I wanted to do a demonstration. So I did. I made up my own ritual. And I did it on YouTube. I told everybody about it. I, I've mentioned it multiple times now, but it was back when I was first starting Rock Gardens. This is what this is my my, my hardscape company. And uh, a lot of my videos, I've shown my work, uh, koi ponds and swimming pools, flagstone driveways, uh, fire pits, everything built out of stone. And this is how I supported myself as I was growing my channel. So like I said, like I said many times, I had over 300 videos and I didn't even have a thousand subs. It took 4,000 subs before all of a sudden I was 
growing. I was growing exponentially every single month, doubling, tripling, quadrupling my subs. But it took it took it was a reach about three years to get four thousand subs, and, and that was like three hundred and seventy five videos. <laughs> so, so I, I finally hit that tipping point. And I just started growing. Now, way before that tipping point was hit, I told everybody. I said, "Listen, we're very simple. All I did was write down on a piece of paper." a message to the oversoul. And in that message was that I need $1,200 tomorrow. Within, well, I said tw within 24 hours. I need $1,200 tomorrow in order to start this new company, Paradise Rock Gardens. I don't care where it comes from, how I get it, get it or whatever, but uh, I was I was only advertising on Facebook and on Craigslist. That's all I was doing. I wasn't even a real company yet. So I did that. I took an oil lamp. Just matter of fact, I got several of them. Here's one right here, just like this one. Truth be told, it may have been this one. It may have been this one. It was one of my bigger lamps. I got so small. I, I used a big lamp, so it may be, be this one. I took an oil lamp. And this is what I did. I wrote down $1,200 on a piece of paper. And then out loud, I told the oversoul, because this is the key ingredient that's missing from the law of attraction. The key ingredient is communication. The construct needs a very distinct and clear image of what it is you want. If you're not clear, then anything fed back to you won't be clear either. If, if you have no real fixed intention, then you can get nothing but a, a different array of signals returned to you. That's not good. That's just going to be amorphous. You can never blame the construct because it's always reflecting back to you exactly what it perceives you to be communicating to it. This is the key. Your intention must be set and clear. There's no clearer way than writing it down on a piece of paper. I took my avatar, which is a part of the construct. This body is not Jason. And I'm borrowing this, but it itself is physical. And therefore, being physical, I know it's not spiritual. Therefore, I make the logical conclusion that this body belongs to the construct. And this is what allows me to get around and to experience all these things inside the construct. Without this body, I wouldn't be able to experience these things. So being a part of the construct, I use this body in the construct to write down $1,200. I let it come out of my mouth through my avatar. I let it be known that I need $1,200 delivered to me before before in 24 hours so I can start my new company, Paradise Rock Gardens, and I'll be okay. If I can just get that, I'll be okay. That's enough for me to eat while I'm working these little, little small, tiny jobs building up capital. It's exactly what happened, but how it happened is very, very unusual. I never expected it to happen this way, and I documented it on my channel. I took that piece of paper, and I out loud after I after I lit the lit the wick and the fire was going, I thanked the fire for consuming this piece of paper because this pa piece of paper had to be destroyed. I said this out loud. This is what I did. I burned that piece of paper. I put the I put the fire out and I thanked the fire. Hey, I, I, I literally thanked the fire for burning that up because I wasn't able to do it and I needed his help. So. Again, I'm involving the construct. There's a very clear line of communication here. The construct itself, which is a part of the oversoul, understood that I destroyed that paper in order to release it so I could receive it in the real world of my avatar. So my avatar could enjoy that $1,200. And let me tell you, somebody that night before I went to sleep responded to my one of my Craigslist ads about doing hardscape and gardening work. I'm living on a motorcycle with a backpack. I, I, but prior to this, I worked oil and gas and I was working 712s. And I was, it ran me down. I almost died. So uh, I, I built up enough capital. I bought a 2018 Harley Fat Boy that I still have today. And I just moved on. And after a while, I had no more money. And this is where I found myself. I did that ritual. That night, I had somebody wanting to come look at the property. That The next morning, I got on my motorcycle with my back, with my backpack. And I just took off to her place uh, at her address, looked at all the garden work, work she was doing. And she pulled out her phone, asked me for my information, and said she'll pay me 600 down. And she asked me if 600 more would be fair once the job was finished. <laughs> so I'm looking at her and you have to understand, I'm hyper-focused. I'm not even thinking about the 1200 I asked for or the ritual. I'm not thinking about any of that. All I'm thinking about is the 600. Okay, 600, 600 is good. I'm thinking about this work. 
I know how much I can do in a day. I'm a workaholic. I'm an engine. So I'm already thinking in my mind, yeah, I can do all this. I can move this big pile of boulders over here. The ones that are too big, I know I can roll them. I, I can get this done. I can build this garden. She already had all the materials delivered, and they were dumped from trucks. So I knew I could put this together in, in the vision that she was seeing. So I said, yeah, it would be fair. It would be absolutely fair. Right then and there, she sent me the $600 to my PayPal without knowing that she had double tapped the button and actually sent me 1200 600 and 600 accident. She didn't mean to say $1,200, but I got that $1,200 that day and I confronted her about it before the sun went down. I still wasn't done with the job. We knew it was going to take two days. I have to come back the next day and finish it. And I told her, I told her, you, uh, you, you already sent me the full $1,200 and uh, you didn't owe me the other 600 till tomorrow. She said, oh, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I'll just come back tomorrow and finish the job. This is exactly how it went down. And it went down so fast that it added a new element to my channel. Now I knew, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to have to go ahead and teach this. This isn't something I can keep to myself. And the more I analyzed what had happened, I realized it wasn't even about the ritual. It was about the communication. It was about the very clear message that I, that I sent out. I didn't do a mess. I didn't do a, a dream board like some people do, which has 50 different images, which absolutely confuses the construct. What, how's it going to build a clear picture with 50 different thoughts? You got to do things sequentially. We live in a sequential universe. Therefore, our, through, the, through the central nervous system and all the ways we process information, it doesn't matter if we know from an intellectual perspective, from a quantum perspective, we understand that there, there is no difference between the past and the future. All we know is that through the filters that have been imposed upon us, we are forced to live in the present. And we cannot experience the past or the future except by virtue of imagination, which is a purely a spiritual quality. So understanding these things makes me know that by virtue of imagination, I can also create whatever reality that I want to experience. So, but I got to do it. I got to play by the rules. And the rules are that I have to do things in order. And that means I have to build a with my mind, which is spiritual. And then I have to move my avatar in the direction of its fulfillment. I don't have to do the work. I don't have to try to fulfill it. I don't have to be anxious about it not being fulfilled. I don't have to think of all the variables that, that, have, that have to be done in order to achieve this because of the end is secure. Every step leading up to it is secure as well. And if I refuse to believe this, then there's no way I'm ever going to receive what it is that I build in my mind. So that one little video and that one little experiment led to all my all my research and all my all my theorizing later. And every time I theorize things in videos for my listeners, I then put them in. I do I do I go through applications. And then I then I do up I do new video. Well, hey man, this is what happened. I I just bought this new van. Um, a van vlog mobile it has become an icon on my channel. But a lot of people who have been listening to my channel remember when I didn't have a van. I was on a motorcycle. You know, and it's just this this steady stream of growth has been because the more and more that I achieve, not just with my channel, but relationships with family and friends and with listeners and, and Campbell and I have been friends for, for a good three years now. Listen, the more I interact with other people, the more I grow, the less I have to do. All I have to do now is just think of these things. And then with my body, imagine that something that I'm doing with my body has something to do to support that idea. It doesn't even have to be true. All I have to do is put it out to the construct that I'm going to Walmart today and I'm going to go down aisle seven and find something. I'm going to buy it. That's a pattern break. I don't know of anything on aisle seven. Don't even know if I need anything on, on aisle seven. But I make that before I even pull up into the parking lot. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. instead of going to Target, I'm going to Walmart, I'm going to aisle seven. I'm going to buy something aisle seven. I don't know what it is, but I need it. And I'll find something that's utilitarian. I'll buy it. And I just did a major pattern break. The construct is now paying very close attention to me. I just did something unusual. So while it's paying very close attention to me, I'm going to broadcast what I really want. Yeah, I want to I want to talk to this girl, Dawn. Uh, I had dinner with her the other night. Uh, I, I'm really feeling her. We got the same energy. Uh, a lot of things are different about us, but I'm willing to work around that. Uh, and next thing you know, I'm in a, I'm in a long term relationship with her. You understand? I don't have to do the work. All I got to do is imagine it and then move my avatar, which belongs to the construct. The construct is going to pay attention to my avatar. It cannot pay attention to the things going through my mind. Why? Because 
all the daydreams and fantasies in the world will never get you anything. How many people lay down every single night fantasizing and never accomplish anything in their life? The construct doesn't pay attention to that. A mental picture is only flash burned into the construct when the avatar does something to support it. And it doesn't have to be much. It just has to be enough to get the construct's attention. Guys, it's as simple as this, guys. I don't even want to complicate it. I don't even want to talk anymore about it. I'd rather just answer questions yeah, because yeah. it's really, it's really this simple. It's a relationship. If you look at it from any other perspective uh, of a relationship between you as an immortal being and the construct, which is which is a part of the oversoul. If you look at it in any other way, you're going to continue to live the life you don't want to live. It's as simple as that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the law of attraction just in the name, right? It, it's a one way conversation is an attraction there's not there's only you know, right. attract in rather than a, a right. conversation I, I remember like I, I was thinking this kind of train of thought a while ago a couple of years ago and I was thinking you know you should see you know whatever the construct um god whatever you want to call it as your friend right your best friend because you can imagine you know if if you had a friend and you're like oh we should go and do this you know blah 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 and they're like yeah that's awesome and then you know, like you start getting down on like, oh, I don't know, this could happen, oh, blah, blah. And, you know, they're going to say, I'm, I'm out of it and, and cruise away. So that's, I've never really thought of it like the, the communication, but that's, I think that's a very big thing is because at the moment, obviously, there's a lot of people who think we're on a prison planet and this is sort of, you know, pushed around as a concept that we're all here, we're locked in, it's, you know, it's, it's a soul trap all this kind of stuff, basically saying that, that God or the construct or the creator, whatever, is not our friend, isn't it? And so, you know, it, it kind of stands to reason that, that if you're thinking that, it's not going to do anything for you. So, you know, I think that's a really big Well, it is, it is. I, have, I, I, I want to interject. I want to interject. It is, gonna, it, is, it is going to do something for you, Campbell. Yeah. Sure. It's, stuff. Yeah. it's going to yeah. reinforce and reflect back phenomena to you that you're going to interpret as you were correct from the beginning. This is the evil construct. This is all terrible shit. Look at the look at this stuff I'm going through. I'm absolutely right. Look at everything, everything you hear. Remember, remember, we are subject to the central nervous system. So if you're mentally projecting a certain idea or a belief that this is a soul trap, then I promise you the five senses are, are going to come up with ways, taste, touch, hearing, smell, and sight will be used against you to make you believe that you are in a soul trap situation. It will reflect that back as circumstance. And I totally disagree with it. Yeah, I mean, I have much respect for the free, listen, Howdy Mikowski, you and I have done a show with him yeah, back yeah. when I was back when I was just starting out. And you know what? I've got two of his books on my shelf back here. I got a lot of respect for him. He's got he's a really out of the box thinker. But he and I are totally totally opposite when it comes to the soul track phenomenon. I want I want to give you a video game scenario, okay? A real quick video game scenario. This should stick in your mind. This is from the perspective of the oversoul. Let's remove this whole thing away from the perspective of just us, the experiencers, all right? Let's, let's look at this from an objective point of view, from the oversoul's point of view. So, oversoul is paying attention to 10 different avatars the oversoul wants to so in order to experience all these beautiful things, the oversoul is going, is going to respond and observe and pay closer attention to those who are creating, those who are acting as co-creators, those who are building. Those avatars that have been stuck in feedback loops are going to be boring. There's nothing to observe. They're in a feedback loop. This is the collective it doesn't matter what the feedback loop is, a hyper-religionist, ultra-liberal, it doesn't matter what the feedback, the, oh, the, the oversoul is going to have most interest in those who are doing interesting, out-of-the-box, non-collective things. Yeah. That's what it's, that's what it, and believe me, it's going to help them do it. All they got to do is break free from that dungeon programming, break free from that, and, the, and they're good. Then they can wake up every morning in a good attitude and not in a bad attitude because every single day is pregnant with possibilities. And when when people live their life believing that anything awesome could happen today, I just got to be aware, be waiting on it, then those things are going to pop up into your life. And when they do, 
you'll grow to expect them. And as you're expecting them, you will enter that feedback loop. And that feedback loop doesn't require any effort. Now, every day, some, some new new people, new experiences, all kinds of new things, and you, your soul will feel like it's soaring because you are being attended to. You're being directly observed by something that is enjoying the experience with you. So yeah, this is it's yeah. it's a, it's 100% a relationship, man. Yeah. Is there no way to say it any any more verbiage would cross over into religiosity. Yeah, yeah, I like your point which is very uh in, intelligent and a lot of people perhaps miss is that when you asked for that first $1200, you weren't just sitting on your couch and waiting for it to drop in your lap. You were willing to go out and do the hard sweat labor work to make it manifest. And I think that's a point that a lot of people miss with their dream boards or they're a new age guru, hit a gong and sit back on your couch and then somehow something's going to you know, show up at your door. You have to be willing to put the active intent yeah. through the process, as you say, of your avatar by helping it manifest in this world. Yeah, well, I, I'll give you a real good, I, you're 100%, I agree with you. But I know that I've had at least 2,000 fantasies sitting in a prison cell dreaming about Heather Locklear. And I tell you what, <laughs> I've, never even, I've never even shook her hand. So there's something wrong with that whole scenario. Mm. You've got to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's, you've got to do something to move into that direction. And once you do, that's when the oversoul takes over. And that's when that's when you're no longer you're no longer making any efforts. Now you're just you're just along for the ride. Uh, that's how easy things come 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 to you. It's just there's no there's a there's just it's it's become so simple now that I seem to complicate it by speaking too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mentioned before about going in the aisle and buying something randomly. So, with doing um, actions, once you've put put out your intention, so mm -hmm. are you saying that that basically you should just choose something to do and, and take an action even nope. if you don't know it's if it's in the right direction. Yes. Okay. It in any way. Okay. Check this out. You are the you are the author of your reality tunnel. It is written by you. So it doesn't matter if it's in the right direction. If you perceive something to be in the right direction, reality will reciprocate. You're making the rules right here, but it's also going to make you live by them. This is why it's very dangerous to be judgmental and opinionated about other people's lives, because in that you are writing the script to be judged in your own. So this is a, this is, this is, this is the, the beautiful, the beautiful magic about, about the pattern break. A pattern break is so hard to do. Let me give you an example. I was driving down the interstate the other day, and there's an old bar called the Fortune Club, the Good Fortune Club that I used to go to. It's a lot of people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that hang out there. It's got a really good atmosphere. I know people there. Um, the other day, I was thinking, you know what? I'm going to, I was about a two miles away from the exit. I had some extra time on my hands. I said, you know what? I'm going to pull in there and see what everybody's doing. Because they all know about Mark Hayes channel. They know who I am. I've been, they know I'm an ex-con. Everybody, everybody knows each other there. So I, I pull, I, I pulled toward the exit. But I woke up that morning thinking I was goal orientated. I have all these things I want to do, places I need to get and want to be. And pattern breaks aren't easy because you're already going down a trajectory that you've mentally put for yourself. That trajectory has already got accretions added to it by the construct even before you experience these things. This is why people and circumstances are being navigated in your immediate future and you go right into that phenomena. A pattern break completely stops all of that. All this programming that is being put into your third hour, fourth hour, fifth hour, sixth hour, seventh hour, it involves all kinds of programming narratives that are far away and they got to come together. Listen, this construct is awesome. Very, very advanced, far more advanced than anything we could replicate. This is some God programming, but it is a construct. These things are already being meant for you because of decisions you've made and, and, and because of past behavior and, and patterns you, you've already lived through. 
but a pattern break. Me taking that exit completely puts a stop to all that. Okay, this construct is prescient, meaning it's already understands about 99% of what you're going to do on a daily basis. It's already got your programming, reality tunnels, all the expectations. It already knows all the multiple thousands of variables that can be introduced into your day. It's already got all this down, but it doesn't matter. What it never has down, what it cannot do is anticipate a pattern break because a pattern break is something only a spiritual being can do. It is a total break from the construct. It is the introduction of an idea to do something different than anything you've been doing as far as your, your habitual behavior from day to day. So it's been six months since I took this exit to go to this bar, the Good Fortune Club. Everything in my future for that day was already knit. Most of it was already there. I just had to, I just had to experience it, go through it. Even people I would come in contact with later that day at different locales before I made it home. You follow me? But then all of a sudden I decided, I said, man, you know what? I'm going to take this pattern break. Well, I'm going to tell you now, I didn't take that exit. I crossed four lanes over position myself to take that exit and something literally made it almost impossible to break free from the programming sometimes the mm. construct didn't want to let go of everything that it, it had already knit for me to experience it didn't so it basically overrode and i just lost interest just long enough to pass that exit because i knew i wasn't going to go four more miles down the highway can do a u-turn and then do another u-turn and then go find the exit again i knew i wasn't going to do all that and so did the construct so it can override you some it did it to me and it's done it several times True pattern breaks are when you absolutely defy the programming, do something new, and that's when new things, new experiences, new people, new phenomena, they're interested, introduced into your life absolutely rapidly. Pattern break is when you need to communicate your desire because the communication to the construct will be received very clearly because it does not want to deal with future pattern breaks. So it's going to give you what you want in exchange. It's a relationship. You understand? It doesn't want to, it, it doesn't want that increase of processing. It doesn't want that unpredictability. It's going to give, and the oversoul is going to, and watch, what is it you're trying to build? What is it you want? What do you want to introduce into your reality tunnel? It's going to build it for you because that's what it is. It is a vast apparatus builder protocol. It's here for us to use 100%. This is a good thing. Now, I won't I won't deny it. A lot of bad people have made the same discovery and they use it for nefarious purposes. And this is why we have the news media, because the news media isn't reporting the news. The news media is building the very world we're experiencing in the collective. Yep. So what, what do you mean if you could explain a little more on uh, you know, the, the reality not interested in more pattern breaks or the unknown, are you building a new tunnel? Okay. I don't have, I don't have to introduce a pattern break in order to build something. I can just put them, I can just put the, I can put the, I can build one in my mind and I can move my avatar in that direction. That's the long game though. That's what you do when you really don't know what you're doing. That's what you do. And it takes a while for that to reflect back as, as circumstances in proportion to basically the spiritual energy beginning and how good you are at letting go. Because anything you cling to can never be released to be reflected back as circumstance. So you got to be really good at letting go. And I am. I'm really good at compartmentalizing building something in my mind, moving my avatar in the direction of the fulfillment of that, and then backing off with absolute faith that I just set something in motion and I don't have to, I don't have to concentrate it anymore. In fact, I'm going to completely forget it and, and do something else. That is the highest form of faith, yeah. letting go. Imagine you're a five-year-old kid and you've never done anything but listen to dad and eat. On the 794th day, you're a three-year-old and you slam your hand on the table. I promise you, your dad's going to be listening. He's going to stare at you and trying to figure out what the hell this new behavior 
means. And he's going to pay very close attention to what that three-year-old says. It's the same concept, 100%. Mm. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of these concepts, you know, are, are what are given in, you know, religions and theosophy and that, isn't it? It's like, don't judge, have faith, um, be close to the creator, you know, all these, all these kind of concepts. So it's, it's, it's not, yeah, it, we, we've been told all this, but, but like you said, we have these thing called the media and the system that's constantly trying to confuse us. And I think one of the biggest things that you mentioned was, um, you know, these dream charts and everything and, and goal lists and that, that they're, they're too complicated. I've sort of mentioned it a few times, all these courses and it's like write out all these lists and pros and cons and make all these dream books and that, but, I'd never really thought of it in the context that that just confuses, it sends a, a smaller signal, doesn't it? You know, obviously one focused beam is going to get through. I, and, I, I think it sends a more complicated signal. Therefore, you'll, what you'll receive is more complicated. You know, oh, if, yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it's going to be a mirror. It's going to be a mirror, 100%. Yeah, yeah I'm telling you, the greatest truths, the greatest truths are very, very simple. Think about the Neolithic period. In the Neolithic period, these people had absolute faith that when they took an arrow out and they drew a circle in the dirt and then they drew an effigy of an antelope, even if it didn't even look like an antelope, if they called it an antelope, it was an antelope. When they drew that circle and drew that antelope, this is a very ancient practice and it's transcontinental. They would draw that animal and then one of the hunters would take that same arrow and shoot that animal and then they would all think the oversoul, calling great spirit, calling it Mumbawambi, calling all kinds of different, uh, white rabbit, whatever they, Bo, Bokika, whatever, whatever name, it doesn't matter. They're merely frames of reference. So they would thank the great spirit for giving them that antelope. And they would thank the spirit of the antelope for feeding their, their, their family and themselves. And they would take that arrow and pull it back out because they knew they were going to get that antelope with that same arrow. And they would take that arrow and they would break that circle. Breaking the circle was the symbol of letting go. They had mm -hmm. to break the circle to let the antelope out so they could go get it. And then that day they would, they would kill an antelope. And to them, there was nothing mysterious about this. It is a practice. Nothing that is practiced for thousands of years could have, could have, been in 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 a, a metaphor only yeah. because after after just 100 years people would have quit drawing damn animals on the ground if that shit didn't work so yeah. it did work they did it for thousands of years they did it on cave art cave paintings oral transmission shamanic tales it's everywhere this is the procedure they used that antelope wasn't real it was a mental image and they used their avatar to do something in physical reality that would that would bring the idea of the antelope here and then cast it out. I'm going to tell you now, I'm of the opinion that many times there probably wasn't even an antelope around, but they didn't know that because the construct can edit in anything. As soon as the central nervous system is not paying attention to a certain area, how many things in your life have popped up suddenly? And you're almost convinced that, that wasn't there a minute ago. This has happened to all of us, and it's happened to all of us multiple times. And there's been many times that due to processing glitches and processing power that we've lost our keys and our combs, our cell phones, and we have looked everywhere and couldn't find them and then went and looked. It happens to us all the time, every bit of it. This is all the same phenomenon. It is bringing what is spiritual, imagination, into a semblance of reality. This is what symbols are. Symbols are actual things. Symbols represent things. This is why Jesus spoke in parables. The parables weren't the truth. They're images of truth. This is what we do. It's spiritual alchemy. This is what the oversoul wants. It just wants you to be an architect. Build what you want. Let it know what it is. And the only way you can communicate with it is doing something, moving your avatar in that direction. And that means these rituals. That means whatever it is you got to do. You want a new car? You want a new car? Go to a car lot. Look at it. You ain't got to go in there and do paperwork. Just go find the one you want. Go visit several car lots until you've made up your mind. Once your mind is made, you got to put that image out there. You got to be very, very specific. Remember, communication is the key. Maybe you could talk a bit more on your take on imagination, where it comes from, how you use it, what it is, how you grew yours, how you learn to trust. 
Uh, I, I'm I'm pretty big on on talking about that. Imagination, intuition, and empathy are the three major spiritual qualities that I have identified. I'm not saying they're the only ones, but they're the they're the they're the three main ones that I talk about in archaics all the time. Imagination is key, just like Albert Einstein said. Imagination is more important than knowledge, uh, and and. You can be a walking encyclopedia, and it doesn't matter if 100% of your data is absolutely correct. If you don't have any imagination, there's no way to apply that knowledge. Applications can only be done through intuition and imagination. And do it just from knowing. If you if you know everything in the world, it doesn't benefit anybody else if you can't if you can't elucidate it. And there's no way to elucidate knowledge without sounding like a rote encyclopedia just spitting out facts. And spitting out facts, spitting out facts isn't isn't the same as putting information together in presentations that people can absorb. That requires imagination. It's way different than knowledge. Knowledge is nothing but the acquisition of information, data points, and data sets, however you receive them. Imagination is entirely spiritual. It has nothing to do with the brain, the cerebellum. Imagine, by virtue of imagination, we can absolutely affect the material world. We, we've been able to heal people. We've been able to change the crystalline structure of water just by thinking different thoughts. Imagination in the scientific realm has even has even spontan i'm talking about spontaneously produced optical quanta being being studied in an electron microscope where nothing could be seen and then by virtue of imagination just believing certain particles were born from other particles they would see those particles in the in the microscope in the, in the microscope where they weren't photographed before over and over and over it is it is imagination which brings into our reality the very things we expect to see. Imagination is powerful. It is absolutely spiritual. It, it is dynamic, and it is the only way that you will ever, ever communicate with the oversoul. Imagination, intuition, and empathy. It's a, it is, I'm not trying to define it here. I'm trying to explain that it is so mysterious that I believe that a study of imagination could go on for the next 100 years by 100 of the most leading scientific minds in the world, and we still wouldn't be any closer to the truth. May I ask how you grew to love yourself and trust yourself? It sounds like you did. If I may make a leap of uh, short judgment in the short time we've known each other here, it seems like you like yourself, you trust yourself, you love yourself, you have full uh, power and belief in yourself. How did you get there from maybe when you weren't there to where you are now? Well, I mean, I went, I went to prison at 17 years old and in prison, I pretty much learned what true evil was. And I realized what I did was really a stupid mistake uh, and got, which got out of hand real quick. Um, and it's, you know what? Uh, Prison really opened my eyes up. I mean, I, I I effed up bad in prison. I ended up staying a long time, and that was my fault. But uh, in prison, I I I I met guys that were absolutely soulless. I've sat at tables and sat on benches with guys that had absolutely <clears throat> no conscience and absolutely no soul, and would listen to you. But but I mean, they would listen. They would listen to my words, but there was no processing power behind their eyes. They were they had no idea of anything about the human experience being anything other than predator versus prey, animalistic. They had no, no conscience whatsoever. Yeah, I was in there with some pure killers. And uh, uh, I just realized, wow, man, all I want to do is learn and teach people. All I want to do is assimilate every all the things that I learned in, in the personal and things that I learned by, by erudition through my reading and my research. Two different things here. It's two different things here. One, things that I learned in my in my intellectual pursuits it is a different type of teaching than things that i learned by applications such as the law of correspondence yeah i don't call it the law of tra attraction because it's more like the law of correspondence mm -hmm. there is a there is a sympathetic correspondence between the construct and the individual this is what's really happening it's not law of attraction yeah. so uh, the law of attraction basically means that all the energy all the energy is only going to be attracted to the one who's teaching the law of attraction. Everybody else is just giving them their energy. So yeah, it's a uh, totally different dynamic, but I, I learned early on that 
It doesn't matter why I went to prison. It doesn't matter what I did in prison. Like, I, I, I mean, I stabbed somebody. I've been in a lot of stuff in prison. I've been in fights. I've been in, in riots. Uh, I've been. I've done everything. I, I, I've, I've meddled in contraband. I got seven years for a cell phone. That was only the fourth. The fourth phone I had. I had many phones before then. That's the fourth time I got caught. It's probably the fourteenth phone I had. I've got mad. Listen, I. I had given up on society and I realized this is my home. I'm going to make the best of it. And I made my own rules and it worked for me for a long time. And, and just, uh, I just, I just realized, you know what, this, this, this whole Southern Baptist upbringing, this Bible, everything that I've memorized, all the stuff, I, you know what, this, this isn't right. This is what the world wants me to believe to try to keep me going down the certain paradigm. But this isn't what I'm finding out to be true. This doesn't apply to this data set. It doesn't apply to this group of people. It doesn't it doesn't apply to this experience. So the more I analyze reality and all around me, I realize that, you know what? I'm not the only one experiencing this. Something within me is also experiencing something great. And it's using me to do that. So when I began to wake, waken up to this fact, I was, okay, well, that means I'm not alone. And if I'm not alone, that means I must have help. And I, I, I do have to admit that this clarity I have is by virtue of long confinement because I was supposed to die many, many times and it didn't happen. I've been sent to the infirmary, to the hospital. Uh, I've fallen off buildings. I, I've had a terrible motorcycle accident. Um, I've been lynched to where I was unconscious. People jumping on my head in prison. Listen, there, there's no way that I have lived through all of this without something making sure that I did so. Because had I been on my own, soulless, like these other guys I, that, I, that I met, uh, I would have been gone a long time ago. Therefore, I, ha I have to conclude that after 26 years and 42 days in Texas prison, mostly in maximum security, by the time I got out to Woodlands, Texas and moved in with my dad, I realized I can't believe I'm even here. Therefore, I've got to do something with this. I can't just I can't just be keep my mouth shut and not try to share with the world all these things that I have learned and all these things that I have experienced. Two different things. My channel covers both. Nice. So what what do you think? I mean, with what you just said, um, a couple of questions. What, what's your views on MPCs? Obviously, there's a lot of talk about this MPC factor. Um, but also, you sort of mentioned that, you know, like the Oversoul was looking after you. Like, what sort of how much emphasis do you put on um fate let's put it that that we're on a journey that that you know like you said you should have died but now you're here spreading all this knowledge um so yeah like what do you think on npcs and and fate as far as you know we have a, a pre um a pre-designated you know, outcome oh you know what i don't you say fate or faith uh fate like we're here to do something and so okay fate all right destiny okay destiny. i get it yeah. i get it um one uh <clears throat> first of all in answer to the question of oversoul is i have to believe i have to believe that the human experience is is one that is spiritually spiritually uh, real and that even the construct itself is just different modes of spirit it's a part of the oversoul but it's just the it's just the lower vibration of the oversoul therefore it, it seems physical to us and the higher vibration or realms that we're trying to attain we're not there yet we're living through life sims this is a construct It's like a holographic overfield of multiple programs and subroutines. And it's so convincing because it needs to be, it needs to be convincing. So immortals can come in here and grow and we can develop. I believe that you are no different than I, and I believe that many people listening to our voices, almost everybody listening to our voices, we're all in the same boat. We decided to be here. We took a, a conscious, we made a conscious decision to have this experience. Now, um, like I said, I don't believe in the soul trap. I don't believe that the oversoul would ever be so nefarious as to as to have you live an entire lifetime in an avatar. And then no matter what you did in that lifetime, 
As soon as you exited your avatar, now your soul is going to suffer consequences because you made the wrong decision and went toward the light. Doesn't even make sense to me at all. Doesn't even make sense. I, I'm not. I'm not even believing any of that because I believe that the very fact that we're here. All the battles have already been won. The very fact that we're enjoying this experience, that we create our own hell. Hell is not a destination. Hell hell is an experience. And if you believe this world sucks and it's never going to be good for you and nothing but bad stuff ever happens to you, like 80% of the world's population, then that's exactly what you get. It's a feedback loop. You did it to yourself. Now, I'm not, say I'm not saying that you're guilty of, of a lack of faith. Because some, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know, I don't know where you are in your spiritual development. So this is what I believe. I believe we're just, we're just immortal beings. I don't believe I can die. I believe this avatar is just, is just a, a meat suit that belongs to the construct and that I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Wouldn't even, wouldn't even laugh about it. If in the near future, you and I are sitting at a in some vast auditorium and there's thousands of people going into different places and there's simulacrum in and we look at the doors and remember Campbell when we you and I were in the nemesis simulation we were right over there that was a hell of a ride I was uh, I was in Australia you were over there in Texas we used to talk all the time I wouldn't even be surprised at all that that we would have an objective existence outside this construct because that's who we are the very fact that the, that the avatar belongs to the construct and that I am something independent of my body necessarily infers that my real body is on the outside of the construct and that this is a temporal experience. And because it's programming, it's made to feel like it was a full lifetime mm. and, it, and it might not have been our whole entire history may go back to 1812. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, um, the whole the whole life sim so everything else could be background programming. We would made sure that in our avatar programming we can't live more than 125 years. So, so at least I don't think we can. I only, I only know of one human who lived up to 125 years, and if it's true, it was Nebuchadnezzar's wife, Nebuchadnezzar the second's wife. You know, 600 years BC. I don't know if that's true or not. I've heard of people living to 110 and 120. I don't know. But I do know this. We don't have any records of anybody living to 138 years, which is the Phoenix periodicity. I don't know. So it's just an, it's just an interesting little data point. But yeah, I, I, I believe that. And I've said this so many times. I just believe that everything can be reduced to its lowest common denominators. And I can actually see all of this as complete 100% artificiality made to look real and that the only thing real here in this little experience on this pro on this little recorded video the only thing real here are the three immortal beings that are sharing this dialogue now it's the only thing that's real right now because we're not even right now while we're recording this we aren't even participating in anybody else's programming their programming has them participating in all kinds of other things so we don't even exist to them right now, unless there unless there's somebody sitting in the room with you, which leads to which leads to another another scientific question that is often asked when people are theorizing about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. When people are theorizing about Schrodinger's cat, you know what I mean. If a tree falls in the forest and there's no biological organisms anywhere nearby to hear it, did it make a sound? So this is the type of construct we live in. We don't. Nothing is put before us into our reality tunnel unless it's necessary. Therefore, it's very easy. It's very easy to deceive us into believing that, that at all times we are a tiny little speck in a vast world. When actually we're a tiny little speck going down a tiny little tunnel. And that tunnel is full of phenomena that makes us believe that we're this grand big old world. And we're not. <laughs> and the over and the oversouls looking down on us, amazed that some of us can make our tunnels bigger, spiral, go out in different directions, build all kinds of things. We're world builders, and those are the, those are the ones that the oversouls paying attention to. Because as I've as I've theorized, I don't know for sure, but I've theorized on my channel 
that we're here for not just to grow and not just to mature, but we're here because the Oversoul has never stopped creating. And therefore, with the addition of new universes and worlds and cosmoses with new realms, there will always be a need for ascension. There will always be a need for higher and higher and higher vibrating immortals to take on more and more responsibilities in the construct. If the creation wasn't a singularity and it's a continuum, then that means that continuum is steadily spawning off more experiences that need to be experienced. Definitely. Um, so, Destiny, do you think that there are some people that are destined for things and that's why they're, they're helped and, you know, maybe, you know, go through okay. his experiences and okay. don't die? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to answer that question by, by the analogy of the insect eye. You know, the insect eye has multiple lenses. It can see yeah. in different areas, but it can't see the whole field. The insect eye is specifically designed to catch movement. Those, it's got the multiple lenses, so it can really see movement and ascertain what it is, if it's predator or if it's prey. So check this out. You asked me about fate. I'm telling you that in the programming, there are roles that need to be filled by individuals. At the same time, I'm also telling you that the construct will never impose its will as to who is going to fulfill those roles. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be back in one second, fellas. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I hadn't, I'd, yeah, right. So basically there's, there is destined lives that need to be lived, but they, they're not specific to a person. It's not like you get picked out. You have 100%. to do this kind of thing, but somewhere in the, in the construct that still has to happen. So. Yes, so. I, I agree. That, that That's my take. That's my, that's my best answer to that. Yeah. I feel I feel that there are there are roles, there are positions, there are leaders in communities uh, that are that 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 fulfill those destined roles. But mm -hmm. if if someone doesn't doesn't you know break yeah, yeah. free, mm -hmm. pro, live up to what they need to. If somebody isn't doing what they need to, the construct the construct will always find somebody who will fulfill that role, somebody who is doing it. Cool. So, so basically. If you believe you're destined, you are. Like we get, it's like the choose your own adventure book, right? You get to choose. I know, agree. Yeah, yeah. Through your actions, what you want to do. That's that's really. I, didn't really I agree. It that way before. That's very cool. I agree. I one hundred percent. As a matter of fact, uh, when we're done with this recording, when we're done, when we're done with this recording, uh, we'll continue this conversation. I have some things to tell you about. About I mean, there there are things I don't want to say on YouTube and, and I'm not trying to be secretive. It's uh I don't need to put I don't need to put ammunition into the enemy's hands. And what I mean is there's a lot of people who will interpret when you tell, when you explain how blessed your life has become because you've done certain things, they will weaponize that against you, say, saying you're just bragging, saying you're just this. But when we're done with this video, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you some things that have happened in my life and that are going on that are very verifiable since you and I met, since we did our first podcast together. And it's by, and, it's, and it has everything to do with this video, just living this type of life and under understanding that this is possible yeah i'm gonna I'm blow your mind campbell as soon as this video is over man i'm gonna tell you nice nice yeah um and it's interesting isn't it that when you know we are successful in australia it's called the tall poppy syndrome right when someone stands up high and everyone runs in to chop it down and and then all but all they're doing is proving themselves to be true because then they have this you know this crappy life that they can't get get higher than anyone because that's all they want to do is you know their reality they're putting out is that you can't make it good and that goes back to it's a bad world it's all against us so it, it's interesting you said it before everyone's creating every day but they don't necessarily take time to look at their results and so they don't notice that they're creating their crappiness and you're frozen you're not recording but but I I would be delighted to continue on in several other conversations. I have a whole bunch of other questions that could take us into other ways of, of looking at this reality and a, a lot of the studies I've done you know, over the the time that I've uh, been on a I would say a similar but different path. Awesome, awesome, nice. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It'd be definitely be good to continue this conversation. Um, 
Because this is the thing, like we're now in this place, we've you know had that three years, that craziness that went through and everyone's had time to think about what they want, you know, look at the system for what it is, look where they are. And I think now that what people really are looking for and what they you know need, if I can say that, is is they need to know about themselves and how they can actually create. And because, you know, everyone's complaining about the world's so bad and we want this new earth. And it's like, when, when's the new earth coming? When are we going to ascend? When's 5D? And the answer is, well, yeah. when we create it, right? So, so that's why the, the media machine's in overdrive saying, look here, look here, look here. And everyone thinks that all these channels on, right. all these truther channels are, are new information, but they're just rabbiting the construct, right? They're just rabbiting the media. And everyone's, so it's this thing, it's, it's like the, the, the dream chart again, right? There's too much info and everyone's confused. And so they're getting confusing lives. Right, I, right. Well, I appreciate, Jason, how you focus on yourself. It shows, like Campbell and I have talked about, the importance of being selfish in a way, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. not being self-centered or egotistical, but, you know, needing to focus on yourself since you're the one creating your reality. And right. so, I've, you know, I've appreciated the stories you've shared. I appreciate it. I want to add something to 2020, okay, this, uh, my, my interpretation of what actually happened is very different than I've heard broadcast by a lot of people. But as you know, in the beginning of 2020, the entire world changed. And yes, it was some, it was some pretty evil stuff. And yes, a, a lot of people passed away. Uh, I don't want to go into the details. We all know it. We don't even talk about it. But 2020 was such an, an incredible systemic pattern break that it did exactly for the population what I just described to you in this video about waking, about making the oversoul pay attention to you. The pattern mm -hmm. break. This pattern break was so systemic that everybody who was supposed to wake up did. So I don't really see what happened as being very bad. Mm -hmm. I don't because a lot of people, we got to understand, I'm not judging things by the, by the dictates of the construct. I don't care about sociopolitical things in the construct. I'm, I'm my judgment concerns the spiritual world. I'm telling you that 2020 was such a pattern break that the scales dropped off all the eyes that it needed they needed to drop from because a lot of people finally just they were they were jarred 2001 woke a lot of people up with the 911 deal that really woke a lot of people up uh initially but they lulled back to sleep 2020 and 2021 woke everybody up who needed to be woke up they're, they're seeing now and now they're searching it doesn't mean they know everything it just means now they realize damn this isn't some this isn't right something else is going on here and they're searching for the truth yeah you, you saw it as a good thing and and i agree yeah. i think i think it was i think you know i mean i've said it before you know who, who would who would choose to go back to 2019 if you had the choice you know not not many people i mean obviously a lot of people are scrambling to get back in the system the ones who didn't wake up but as far as, you know, my life, I'm glad it all happened, you know. I was in a job, man, back then. Now I'm, you know, living out off-grid in the dome. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's good. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's my opinion, that, that from a spiritual perspective, this was all good. And we're weeding out all this garbage stuff, garbage theories, things that don't apply, all these accretions that have attached to 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 the to the realm of human experience that don't belong. Uh, we're exposing the charlatans. Yeah, I'm just I, I'm big on that on my channel. If you got, <laughs> mil if you got millions of viewers, yeah, I'm ca I've been calling them out lately. Yeah, I, I haven't yeah. had a single one of not a single one of them answered, but I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm talking about man. I, I, there's some of these theories that have that have got way too much traction. Millions of people mm. listen, to them, and there's zero data to support them. And I'm I'm just on fire lately, and I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep twisting that dagger. I'm done. Mm. I'm not. I'm not done. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's so much disinfo out there, and of course, you know, there was that you know the big um, group that kind of came up from 2020, 21. You know, the the MAGA movement and. So many people built channels off that that literally started, and within a month they had a couple hundred thousand people and yeah. they were promoted everywhere. So you know it's a good point. If someone's being promoted, you know double have a have a, a real good think about you know are they telling you the truth or not? Because 
you know, there's always an agenda behind, you know, if, if the agenda can get in there, they will, I guess, is, is the point. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, agree, I agree with that. Mm. I've, uh, I've had all kinds of offers from big companies. It's uh, I just don't want to do that on my on, on my channel at all. It's it's uh, you're right. There's a there's a lot there's a lot of attractive offers out there, but they come with agendas, man. Mm. They do they come with chains too. Yeah, man. <laughs> Indeed. Cool. You know. All righty. Well, it looks like we're coming to an end here. So that was really good. You know, thanks so much for your time. But yeah, definitely, if you're into it, it'd be good to continue the conversation and. You know, get this info out there because, like I said, I think this is really the info that, that needs to get out there at the moment is how do we achieve what everyone's yelling about, right? Everyone wants change, everyone wants this new earth. So let's, you know, let's just do it and stop focusing on all the minutiae that's being thrown at us by the, the, you know, the construct. Hey, yeah. good word, good word, minutia. That's one of my favorites. But <laughs> uh, I do, I would like to close with one thing. I don't, I don't know. I do not agree. I do not agree with the idea of, and, and please don't misinterpret this. I don't agree with the idea that we need to do anything at all. Mm. What I mean is, is that this dynamic between you and the oversoul is so cogent and so all pervasive that if you really want to change the world, then all you have to do is change yourself because mm. the more you change yourself, your world will change. And then when other souls see that going on, that they will see that as well. People, we learn by osmosis. You can't tell the truth to anybody these days. You can demonstrate it, but you can't just tell the truth anymore. You gotta, you gotta give analogies and you gotta give metaphors. And like I said, I think I think that's why Jesus spoke in parables. That's why that's honestly because you just can't tell the direct truth in a construct that thrives off deceit. You have you have to infer truths, or you have to act in similes like rituals. This is what the construct pays attention to, like drawing the circle with the antelope. Mm. So, yeah, yeah I, I just wanted to, to clarify that because I do not believe that we're here to save. The, we're not here to save the world at all, but we can. But we can improve the world when we only work on ourselves. And uh, I don't believe that's selfish. I believe that is what the that is what we're here to do to develop this relationship between us as a highly personal being and the oversoul itself. Because if we're going to receive a divine inheritance outside of the construct and take on more roles of the multiverse or whatever it is, then we have to grow into that responsibility. We can't just be given it. Yeah, I hear you. You know, Campbell and I are going to be in Florida, what, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. We have our own event, Practical Evolution for Life. So we're going to be kind of in your neck of the woods. I'm going to Toronto to visit my folks first. I'm in Japan right now, and then I'm going up that way. And in, our event is basically based exactly on what you've mentioned, helping people to get themselves, to change themselves, to uh, alter the world by picking up personal responsibility. And wow. uh, yeah, yeah, so it's amazing that we get a chance to finally chat and share right now as uh, – no, we're heading out that way ourselves. Maybe we'll get a chance to meet. We we'll have to catch up. Well, yeah. well, we might. I'm doing a meetup on the 21st with uh, Max Egan. Uh, Max Egan's going to be there. Logan of Decode Your Reality. Uh, Danny of the remaining uh, removing the shackles. Uh, Martin Leakey's going to be there. Uh, we're, Where you are? We're going to be we're going to be doing a meetup, but it's in California on the 21st. 21st right. of October. 21st of October. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're, yeah. we're gonna be in Florida, yeah, on October sixth, seventh, and eighth. Other where side in, of the country. Where, where Port, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Is that the southern part? It's um, in Orlando and West Palm in the middle. Okay, in the middle. You know what? I Big John and I, we might just drive to Florida and just, just drop in on you guys. Yeah, I man. mean it's it's uh, it's about a fourteen hour drive, but I can do it. We'd love to see you there. That would be great. Yeah, let's chat further on that and, and figure some stuff out. But that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah. If you're gonna come to to the states, Otto, we got it. We got to at least yeah, drink. To catch up. <laughs> we got to drink one together, man. Yeah, it sounds good, cool, man. I'm into it. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. So let's chat some more between now and then, if we get a chance. If you're free, Jason, you know I'm happy to connect and uh, discuss. Uh, you know, I have some questions that we can go deeper into some of the topics you've brought up, and I still would love to hear once we stop recording. 
the blow our mind stuff after uh, Pamela <laughs> pushes pause on the record part of this conversation. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, he's got to hit the stop button first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Cheers. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, thanks for, again, uh, for being here as well, Lorenzo. That was really cool. And we'll catch up with you in the future. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And we'll catch you on the next upload. Bye for now. Losing all control, no fear. The trumpets are blowing, time to bail is here. Love is all going to set us free. Are you ready to fulfill your destiny? All rise from the depths within a revolution. People come on this and sit down. Got this love in our heart through righteous feeling. What the fuck you gonna do? Stand up and know your part too hard. Open up and a piece of come now. This is it. Is this what we've been waiting for? Warrior, dream again. Your destiny. I'll fold away. Not compromise. Hey, hey, hey. Freedom, 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 yeah. Freedom, freedom, freedom is calling us. Freedom, 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 yeah. Freedom, freedom, freedom is calling us. Stepping it up, taking a chance, risking it all. We're going crazy. Stepping it up. Freedom, freedom, freedom is calling us. Freedom, 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 yeah. Freedom, freedom, freedom is calling us.